it's not very often that you see a black belt burn their black belt and say they are taking a stand against jiu-jitsu, but that's what's happening with my guest today. His name is Evandro Nunez, formerly of the Gracie University, and I will be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure how this conversation is gonna go. He reached out to me and wanted to talk about this stand that he's taking, and I don't really know what that stand is or what has happened, and I have a few ideas of what I think happened, but I'm going to let him tell us his side of the story and what's going on. So please welcome Vandra Nunez. I don't want to talk too much about it. I'd like to just kind of hear it from you. So if you could just kind of give me some some backstory to that led you to where you are right now and what the stand is you're taking now. Yep. So basically, the way that I like to see it is I feel like I did everything that's possible to be done inside the Jiu-Jitsu community to the sake of... I've walked inside this big circle, right? So there's from the street fights in Brazil, from going up in Brazil and getting my black belt in Brazil, and then coming to America under the competition dream that we have this this aspiration to become the the world champion, and you know, and then beyond that, um, this this pathway of teaching and sharing, which I would dare to say that most of us are called to do that. We just love teaching others and sharing. And there's just something that really moves us. And then I pursued that path and then teaching like hundreds of kids in one class, like incredible experiences, right? Teaching women how to defend themselves. And then that led me to teach like law enforcement officers, which that was like an incredible experience that I never even thought that was, I could be part of something so incredible like that. And and then you keep climbing, right? I think that's that's the, the 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 trend. You keep climbing, you keep climbing, you keep achieving, you keep achieving, you keep these promises under you. And then you make the money in the industry, which is a dream. Most people that I know, they're like, man, I got you make money and teach jujitsu. Wow, I, I wish I could quit my job and do that for life. And I was just like that too. So then I don't know if by accident, Justin, but I kept winning on these games, right? Teaching celebrities, teaching NFL players, NBA players. And I had some, you know, the, the pay-per-view tournaments. Then nowadays it's very on fire. Back in the days it was much smaller. I fought Metamoris and, the, and those things. And I was like, oh, I'm here. And then when you get there, like, uh, well, hold on. That's not really what it was. And then you, you basically had, you have to go through the path to realize that maybe that in which you're looking for was not there, right? And I think that's a, a a life lesson for all of us in many other aspects of our life beyond jujitsu, even, right? But I discovered that through jujitsu. And then now that I that now that I did those things under a certain few a few promises, I'm like, hold on, I really believe that the things that I have today, I had before training jujitsu. Okay, okay. I, so that's why you see this big shift right now, which is my hope of. Telling people that, hey, keep training if you like it. Keep going. I did it. There's some pros and cons. Let's talk about them. You know what I'm saying? But let's do that with the, that, 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 the promised land, let's call it, already delivered in you. You're doing for a reason. You're doing because you're inspired to be a man and a king and a warrior. And you just kind of go on that, on that shortcut, per se, right? If I'm, I just want to make sure I'm, yep. I'm understanding your, from your point yep. of view. You're saying... The things that you thought you were getting from jujitsu, you already had those things. So maybe what you thought you were getting wasn't as fulfilling as you expected it to be. Great question. Let me put it like this. The benefits that I thought that jujitsu was giving me, they were already inside of me and they were mine and they are yours, Justin, as a human being. And then because I didn't know where it was coming from, I gave it to jujitsu. So then I said, jujitsu saved my life. I said, jujitsu empowers me. I said, jujitsu gives me the courage to speak up and defend myself. While that is not the truth, the truth is you make a decision in within yourself. And then that makes you take a stand for what you believe. You take, make a decision to be willing to die for something you really believe or to take an action. It could be quit your job, could be start a business, could be ask the girl out, could be divorced, could be stay married, right? Whatever we decide to be, I'm going to do it because I decided. We do that without jiu-jitsu, and then jiu-jitsu can help us, but primarily can help us win a fight. I think the best analogy to explain this, brother, is that how can I be that person that I am called to be without distracting myself with jiu-jitsu, without needing more jiu-jitsu? Because it's never enough jujitsu, Justin. I, like you know that 
you get better and then like okay I'm, i i suck at this and then you get better i'm not good and it and that's that's just the game and when you get super good then you get older you get sick because who knows the price you paid on drugs or injuries that now you're a little older so now you're not as good so how can we really take the the, the, the benefits of martial arts justin without selling us and giving to jiu-jitsu it's not jiu-jitsu uh, so just to conclude my point is that jiu-jitsu is a sword beautiful sword pure powerful sharp but without you it's just another game it's just one more corrupted industry that is farming on people's inadequacies well i i do want to talk about the industry stuff it, it doesn't sound like you're saying jujitsu is bad jujitsu can't help people you're saying jujitsu shouldn't be the be all and end all to help people because we all know people who have gained confidence from jiu-jitsu just in their ability as adults to be in control of their own body, to, to move well, to, to be healthier. And it can be a tool, but, and there's still benefits to that tool. Like you said, using it as a sword, but that shouldn't be the only thing in your life. Like you shouldn't just only have jiu-jitsu and do nothing else to take care of yourself. And also you have to be willing to act in order to use the things you've learned in jiu-jitsu. Correct. Exactly. I know black belts that are incredible fighters and they are cowards. They don't they, they, they lie to their wives, they lie to their business clients, they they lie because they are afraid of speaking the truth. I know people that don't change jujitsu that they look in your eyes and they say, Hey, this is what's up. They speak up. You see, they're courageous to that sense. Right. So to your point, there's one hundred percent benefits for jujitsu. But um what I am challenging people, which that's the hard part of the message, is that that's not jujitsu giving it to you. Because you were courageous enough to step into the gym. You already had that before jiu-jitsu. Right, right. That's very hard to do. Right. That, that is definitely courage- the hardest thing. You see people come into a school where, especially who people who aren't familiar with our sport, you think it's just, I'm going to go into this room and I'm going to get beat up. And people still take that first step and still come in and want to try. So I agree with you there. You need that courage to act. And even that simple action of, I'm going to walk in the door can build confidence before you even get on the mat. And it's yes, it can be a very intimidating thing for a brand new person to walk into. Yes, 100%. So that already speaks a lot of volumes from the person's integrity or even courage or even just willingness to, to grow and to expand themselves, right? My problem, Justin, is that when we give the power to jiu-jitsu, when we say jiu-jitsu gives me confidence, now you are weak and afraid and inadequate because you're never going to be as good as X, Y, or Z. Right, right. So, for example, I don't know how much you weight or your experience level. It doesn't really matter. But let's say, do do you have the confidence to fight me? I don't know. I mean, I know you burnt that belt, but you you very much outrank me. And I I think this is kind of the 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 point you're getting to of what do these rankings really mean, and and what does it mean in your overall life, not just your skill as a competitor. Fair, but you see how complex that answer was. Yeah. I was like, I don't know yeah. how weight. How much do you weight? What's your belt? What's this? Like my invitation for people is that nothing of those answers, Justin, matter. Right. Because let me ask you this. Let me say you you said you have a you have a daughter or a son. I have both. I have a five year old daughter and a three year old son. Okay. Can I can I create a hypothetical sure, sure. triggerful scenario right here just for the sake of uh, dialogue? Yeah. Sure. Let's say we walk in the park and I see your son and I push him down the floor and I spit on him. Right. Well, then do you have? I, I you have the confidence to fight me at that moment. Right, exactly. It's, it's and but again it goes it goes away from confidence versus what you have to do. It's not it's not confidence of whether I, I think I'm gonna hit you with a bolo and take your back. It's whether you yes. know <laughs> real life situations. Yes, that's it. And that's it. That's the difference that I want people to realize that there is willingness. That's what I call willingness. That's the thing with your son thing that you're like, man, I'm on. And then there is enhancing your probability of success. And I think both are great. Are you kidding me? If I spar with you, whether I win or lose, I'm going to learn. I'm going to improve myself. And that's great. My my invitation for people, though, and that's why people get very emotionally triggered because they think that I'm destroying jiu-jitsu. And I'm like, no, let's just, just realize that there's another portion of it. And I'm going to be bold enough to, to dare, Justin, that is more important than your ability to fight. More important than your burn bolo or leg locks or arm locks is, man, do you have what it takes to see evil or to see something that is wrong and and step into it, no matter your belt, rank level, if you're fat or fit or tall or small or whatever. Do you have that in which what it takes? 
And the promise of jiu-jitsu is that once you get a black belt, you will. Once you X, Y, Z, you will. Once you make more money, you will. And I'm coming back and saying, guys, that if that's why you're going, that's not it. You have that already right now as long as you have clarity in who you are, your values, your passions, and what you need to fight for. Talk, it kind of leads me into you know some of the industry talk. You know, I, I feel like it's once a month now we're seeing news stories about this school instructor was doing this terrible thing. This black belt was doing this. This person in jiu-jitsu was doing this. We still have people in this community who are, are invited to certain events when they have very dark, terrible things in their past, and I can't imagine why we're including them. Do you think as these it's becoming more prevalent that this these things exist. Was that part of what pushed you into the stance you're sort of taking now as you're seeing this thing in within our community? Yes. So first of all, let me tell you this. Some of you guys are following these people that they're putting in front of you. And it's not even your fault to the sake that there's a recreated generation no money machine that exists before I was even born. There's legacies before me. There's jiu that came from who knows where. So part of us, we're just born into it. We love it. And then we start following these people. And it's not fully your fault to the sake that you don't know. You're being lied to. So a portion of it is not even your fault. It's to blame on them, right? But you said like this, I don't even understand why they're still bringing these people. Well, that's where the conversation started becoming a little uncomfortable. And that's why I was led to burn my black belt, which was not an easy thing to do. People see, oh, he burned his belt. Ha, ha, ha. Bro, it's, it was part of my identity. I gave 20 years of my life to preaching jiu-jitsu. Hey, you have to train jiu-jitsu. Like, I was that guy. Like, you don't train jiu-jitsu? Come on, what's your problem? Let's go. I take you to the gym. I'll take care of you. Everything I do, that, bro. So it's a big, you know, disassociation. So the reason why I did that, brother, and I didn't do that before, is because I really believe, Justin, in the heart of the leaders of jiu-jitsu. Because one thing is for people to fail, and we forgive them, because I I fail too. I'm not perfect. I, you know, I did my mistakes in the past. I still do mistakes nowadays. But when I do them, if I mess up, um, if I fail with you, Justin, I'm going to call you, say, Justin, I messed up. I did X, Y, Z. I'm sorry. I take ownership. If you don't want to work with me anymore, fine. This is where I am, and I try to repair. I really believe that that's what the, the, the marketing and the media of the champions and this dark stuff that you're mentioning – I was like, oh, these people just did a mistake. And the reason why I took this strong stance is that I no longer believe that, Justin. Okay. What do you believe? What I believe, which I've seen with my own eyes, and that's what I'm attempting to express, is that it's done on purpose. They will protect the industry of jiu-jitsu because it's generational wealth and fame and MMA and whatever you call it, right? You can even go to WWE and... NFL, like everything. They'll protect the industry more than they will care about individual experiences. Their values, hierarchy, is money or fame or reputation before protecting the students. Which all I'm inviting us to do is to see by what it is. I'm not even saying that that is wrong to the sake that, oh, we should all grab torches and burn their gyms and cancel them. That's not even what I'm saying because I don't even want to talk about them. And that's what we end up doing. We do the posts about the guys and we're trying to, uh, but the, 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 the core answer is look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, why are you shaking those people's hands? Why are you reading the, the, the highlights of BJJE and seeing a certain name and then, oh, 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 this guy's betting $1 million? Wow, let me, let me, let, let me see. Let me see. And, then, what? and that's the, the systematic agenda that, back to my point, I don't think is accidental. It's not like people just forget. Oh, never mind. No, they're doing it on purpose. And they will do it for as long as it takes. And they will hold belts over your head. And they will tell you that you're not enough because when you become a brown belt, you're not a black belt yet. When you become a black belt, they're going to say that you're not a world champion yet because that, those things happened with me. And when I was a black belt, they told me that I need to make money first because who am I? And then they told me that I had to be three times world champion. And then they told me that I, like, it just keeps going it, to the extreme point that once I did quote unquote everything, even though I, I'm not the legends and the fames, that's not my curriculum right there. I'll t t t touch the top and I'll bounce to a new one to try to find a top, right? So I was, I was a little more agile on that. Um, but when I got to the top of the top, 
and I wanted to do a social project in Brazil, my mentors told me it's not profitable enough. So I was like, got it. So that's the true. And it took me 20 years to climb through this maze that you guys created on purpose. And that's why I'm angry. And that's why I had to burn my belt. And that's why it comes out a little aggressive uh, because I am like, guys, this is not an accident. They know what they're doing. They are creating this church-like feeling on purpose. And that, my brother, I think it's wrong. I don't think it's wrong that the gym owners, I don't know if you own a gym or not, but that they- No, I don't, they but I'm, I'm, I'm following you, but I don't, just so we, you know good. where we are. So that they teach from the good heart. Most of people that are watching us, they teach you from a good place. And I really trust their heart. They're, they're not the evil ones that I'm talking about. I'm talking about their masters that they bout you, that they don't even know, that there's NDAs and there's, I really believe that if people knew everything that happened from the history of Jiu Jitsu, they would be much more protected and they'll protect themselves. And in as a consequence of that, they will protect their students. Because even the gym owner that has their heart in a good place, and I really believe that, I, I want to make it clear that there's good people out there. Um, they unknowingly grab the new student, Justin, and they unknowingly they feed them into the machine. Because, oh, did you hear Gordon Ryan fight or XYZ or whatever? Like, you know what I'm saying? And then next thing you see, that person becomes a fan of someone else and now he's lost in the rabbit hole. So that's, I think that's a problem. Now, when you, when you burnt the bell and, and, you know, we were getting, I was getting ready to, to have this conversation yep. with you. You know, I talked to some other people that I know in, in jujitsu and I just was like, hey, you know, have you seen this and what's happening on? And, and a lot of what the feedback I've gotten from people is, I bet you he just had a falling out with Gracie University. I bet you that they just had a disagreement or he quit or something happened and that's what led all that this to happen. Yep. Is that what happened and was that a final straw or was it on your terms you had some realizations just the day before you burn your black belt that you spent 20 years earning? Yep. What happens that makes the next day happen? So the death of a dream happened. And the death of that dream is not the financial recognition that people are implying with that assumption, right? Oh, now that he's no longer there, now he's... That, that was not the dream that died because that dream died long uh, a while ago. The dream that died was me realizing, Justin, that no one is coming to help us. No one is willing to speak the truth. No one is going to empower the individual over the circumstances. No one's going to empower the blue belt. Say, hey, blue belt, you don't need more jujitsu. You can train if you want. You can follow the path and the business and the issue. That's fine. But just so you know, you're already better than 95% of the population. As a purple belt, man, I don't even like, you're a freaking assassin, bro. Like <laughs> regarding the common man, let's call it, right? And people don't right, say right. that. Ver the first untrained man, you can do whatever you want, basically. basically. But no one says that, right? They say they say maybe 1% and then they move on. Hey, but you need to get your next belt. So so they, they pull it in, right? So I had this conversation, brother. So, so, so let's split this answer in a few parts, right? First, let's clarify that. Yes, there was a big falling out with Grace University. There was uh, a big betrayal. There was contract breaches. And I burned my belt. If you watch the video of me burning my belt, that happened two years ago. Because on that video, I say, I've been training Jiu-Jitsu for 18 plus years. That's what I say on that video. On my new 45-minute video that I just launched, I say, I've been training Jiu-Jitsu for 20 plus years. So there was a two-year gap there that I'm writing the book and offering the solutions and recording the courses. That, that's how long it took me from taking a stand, which I'm actually glad that it's recorded like that. So it's, it's the proof. Not that my words need to be proved, but some people need the proof, and I respect that as well. So... And I was still working at Grace University after I burned my belt. And when the breach of contracts happened and when the betrayal happened on the back end, that is potentially irrelevant, although I have no problem sharing, um, that's when I decided to quit. That's when I discovered deeper things about tests, about fraud, fraudulent, you know, purposeful manipulation, like the things I've said before. And um, and that's when I decided to quit. But that was, was uh, my belt was already burnt two years ago. So that's that's one face of it, if that makes sense. I I know some of the criticisms you have with the the, the modern jujitsu industry and, and the way that works. I guess I have a two part question. And the first part will be, yep, what would you like to see happen next on the non competitive hobbyist jujitsu people who come in and they don't want to compete, they don't want to be world champions. They don't even want to really watch jujitsu. They just want to train because they like it. 
What would you like to see okay. be different now in Jiu-Jitsu Academies versus okay. what is happening that you don't like? Okay. Okay, that's very good. So let's let's hold that question there. Hopefully you have it written also don't forget it. Uh, it just pulled me back to clarify the death of a dream that I told you. Right, right. That it just came back. That I, I didn't really cover that part. Let me cover that part so then we can continue this chronology. Sure, sure. I think that's been very enlightening. Um, so the death of a dream was that I used I started training jiu-jitsu brother because I was afraid and I was a street fighter in Brazil. Long story short, my dad told me, if you see something wrong, don't come back home without taking a stand for it, right? So then I was winning 50% of the fights and losing 50% of the fights. That's when I that's why I started training jiu-jitsu. I was like, man, I need because I'm fighting for what is right. I had this superhero identity, right? I was like, man, like, uh, like I need a cape or something. But I didn't have the cape. I was just a kid fighting. Right, right. So Jiu-Jitsu promised me that. And Jiu-Jitsu gave me that. Jiu-Jitsu gave me the superpowers. It's straight up a superpower. Um, So I believed that the further I grew in it, I would find the Avengers. Because if I am an honorable warrior, and if I follow these people, I will find them. And I will belong in them. And that's when Grace University enters because... Uh, you know, I got my black belt with high end, which is Hanzo's brother. And there's a whole thing in the competition journey. And that's when after, I, I don't think people know that. People just see me for Grace University here, which is kind of the peak in which I was standing on, on high performance teaching. But they didn't see where I got my black belt from and the street fights and the competition thing that I did on the back end. So basically, I got both words, right? I entered through this one and then I landed on the Grace University thing. So I remember having this conversation. I pulled like, there was a graduation happening, a black belt ceremony. And then I pulled like four black belts in the corner. And I said, hey, guys, um, this ceremony is great. We're doing the test. We're doing the evaluation. Everything looks fine. My question for you is that when are we going to talk about some values and some morals? Not to preach them, not to say, hey, you should do this because I'm your guy. But when are we going to have an inviting, open conversation about truth? Do we tell them that as a black belt, you have a higher responsibility of leading and speaking the truth? Do we even say that? When I brought that up, brother... The one of them looked down, the other one looked to another black belt, and the, the alpha, let's call it, looked at me and said, yeah, Evandro, you know, we don't talk about those things because, you know, like, there, there was lies in my family and some someone did X, Y, Z. So when I talk about truth, people call me out and they say they should not be talking about this because I'm not qualified because someone in my family lied in the past or maybe I lied in the past and so therefore we don't touch it. So that was the day that my dream died. That's That was the day I was like, got it. So you guys are not standing up for values or warrior or doing what is right. At this point, for X, Y, or Z justification, it's about the business. It's about keeping them, moving them forward because we don't get political. You know what I'm saying? We don't take a stand. And in my understanding, because where I, what I started to train jiu-jitsu for was necessarily to take a stand against evil and wrongdoers and bullies or whatever you want to call it, right? So... So that's when I was like, all right, now I have to do it. And that was the day, bro. That was that, that conversation was the day that my my it was not the day that after that I burned my belt, but my ship kind of turned five degrees. And then years later down the line, my belt is burning, and here I am spitting some fire and people getting offended in every corner. Right. If right. that makes sense. It just kind of shifted your perspective so, of the people that you were with and, and yes. what the, the path yes. you thought you were on versus what they thought you were on. That's yes. where the shift happened. Got it. Yes, exactly. And for those people that, that, that are making the close association with me uh, quitting you, and by the way, I quit the, the position. I, I walked away from million dollar contracts because I cannot stay on that position. Like it's that thing, like the same way when I kicked your son, in this hypothetical thing, you're like, you cannot not do anything about it. I was like, no, done. Like, I'm out. I want nothing from you guys. Full, like, disconnection. No money, no nothing. And I'm out. And I bounced. And my family's paying for it. I'm paying for it. But guess what? There's no other way that I would have any difference. Because it is truly what I believe to be right. It is in alignment with my soul. And I have never been so clear to this message. So I think that that, that kind of... Answers a little bit more that, and I really, I, and that's why I'm so thankful for, for you because conversations like this help bring clarity to hey, what is he doing? Why is he doing? So I'm very grateful for the opportunity to have deeper conversations. Well, definitely, because you know, it, on social media stuff, it it has to be quick. You can only get so much out yes. in ten to twelve yes. seconds. Like I saw the other day, like the ideal Instagram reel is eleven seconds for the most viewership. You can't really get out a longer message in eleven seconds. So. Doing a podcast and a video that I'll you know I'll put on YouTube yes. and, 
and I'll, I'll split this video up into some smaller ones too so people can really see the message. I think it's important that you have the, the forum to sort of get some of that out. But now that we, yeah, we've, I appreciate that. Now we've got the context of you know that shift, what would yep. you see, say you're opening a brand new school today, you're 100 new students coming in, how do you run that school yes. differently than it's been done in the past? That's great because that's part of the solution, right? So I'm not going to open a school. I have no interest. I'm burned out by teaching techniques and I don't want to spend my time doing little adjustments anymore. That's not for me. I'm very grateful for people that do it. And I really believe that there's a great service to be done there still. Uh, when people ask me that, my first answer is like, I cannot even call it jujitsu. If I would open a school today, bro, I, I cannot call jujitsu. I cannot call self-defense. I, I would have to come up with a new name. I don't know. Because, and why, why is that? Because the word jujitsu, brother, has attached connotations to it that will inadvertently lead to the entering of uh, MMA community, jujitsu community, and legacies that we don't know the truth, and champions, and red belts, and whatever. That it's outside of our control. We don't know what happened back then. We know what happens today, which is very, um, what is the word for it? Questionable, right? So there, I don't see how, although I would love to find an answer, you can teach jiu-jitsu, have medals on a wall, watch UFC on, the, on Saturdays, and not send your students, do which they trust you, into a corrupted community. I don't, I don't know how. So to, because we cannot change the name of jiu-jitsu, we just have to be aware that the word jiu-jitsu got corrupted and has false connotations attached to it. So then my goal as an instructor would be to protect my students from the secondary ramifications of this connotation. So I would say things like this to my students. Hey, guys, let's trade jiu-jitsu. Nice. Empower them. Like, all the good things that you guys do. And then when the time is right, I'd say, hey, be careful with an enemy. What is the enemy? It's an industry that will try to sell you a gi. They'll try to sell more gis than a red gi, then more wretch guards. Then they'll try to say like this, so-and-so slapped someone in the face. I can't believe it. We must watch their fight because X, Y, Z. So that's the enemy right there. The enemy is like feeding them into the industry. Keep training jiu-jitsu. Keep doing arm locks until you feel they can look at a giant, take them down, and defend your kid against it which that doesn't take long, as we agreed prior. But protect yourself from the secondary connotations and associations that, that was part of this story, that's part of it, but somehow nowadays I don't find to be on the right path. And that's why I said on my last uh, talk that I had that I'm not sending my daughter to jiu-jitsu. Now, jiu-jitsu is good for kids, and there's a whole thing there, but we, we can talk about that if it makes sense. But that's where... I, no, I, I get where you're I coming am. from. Um you know, it's the, the pushback I would give is that I love jujitsu and I love being on the mat as much as possible. So I want those same experiences I've had to be had by others and people that I care about. And I, I, I love when new people come in and get exposed to the jujitsu we have on the mat and that community and, and, and that involvement. And I think, yep. you know, I, I, I think for so many people, jujitsu is a hobby they do two or three times a week and it's their form of exercise and it's fun and they like to do it yep. with their friends and, and all that. And I think that there is a much smaller population that really gets invested in everything that happens between Gordon Ryan and Craig Jones and who's doing what and who's saying what and what's happening on the competition scene. I mean, what percentage of students even compete themselves, let alone are going to watch every single event on, on flow grappling? So I, I would make the argument that there is a place still for hobbyist jujitsu and, and even people that do want to compete. You don't have to go down the rabbit hole of yes. all of the negatives that you, you've talked about. Yep. But again, like it's just you've had a different lived experience with jujitsu than I have. And everyone will have different experiences. So it's about, I think, for instructors to let people know these are some of the things that have happened in the past and, and whatever and to be on the lookout for. But it doesn't sound like you're saying jujitsu as a sport, as an activity for fitness is terrible. Oh, it's your, incredible. Your, 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 your critique is with the industry and the shadiness and all of the things that come with it. Yes. If you were in charge of completely changing the professional scene, completely changing pay-per-view jiu-jitsu, okay. jiu-jitsu as a spectator sport, okay. would it exist? And if it would exist, 
how would it be different than it is now? All right. So incredible question. I'm going to have to, I'm going to say something right now that some people might get a little bit offended, but here I am. That's why I'm here to do it. Okay. That's I, why you're here. That's why I, you're here. I mean this with all love in my heart. The number one thing to do with the Jiu Jitsu competition and this, this industry that you mentioned is to turn your face away from it. It's to looking within yourself as a hobbyist, as someone that likes to dabble in Jiu Jitsu a little bit. They're not too concerned about those things. It's for us. How can I achieve the, the promised result of martial arts? Which is what, Justin? Full empowerment of the individual over any and all circumstances. That's it. No matter if they're a giant, no matter if they have a gun, no matter what, you take a stand, you speak the truth, you live the life that your younger self thought that you would be living nowadays. You don't numb with addictions and scrolling and alcohol and pornography and drugs and all the other things that it's part of our human experience that we have to be careful so we don't lose ourselves there. So how can I be who I truly am despite the circumstances? The solution for competition is to not watch them. It's to spend that time in which you're competing or doing the, those, those level of techniques and ask yourself, man, what do I want for my life? What is the dream life that I want? What do I stand for? What, bro, Justin, what makes you angry that when you see you like, ah, ah, like you need to step into that because it is to my understanding that there's a calling there. That, that's that's a fight that you're willing to fight. The kid example is very easy and silly, but what else? Like, I have a, a few things that I get stirred up, brother. And the, the jiu-jitsu community is one of them right now that, you know, has nothing to do with the competition, but I want to fight against the lies and the people predating on people that don't know the things that I know. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, like, a, a lot of what we talk about, you know, it's, it's very hard for me to listen to and not relate it to my own academy my own instructors okay, okay. you know my, my instructor's instructor the, 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 these messages that i've seen okay and i i think that i'm lucky in that i i've been in this sport for 13 or 14 years now i've been, I, you know i've i've seen wow. a lot of things so i'm not someone who's i don't have 20 years like yourself Bro, i'm trying matter. to catch you i'm trying to catch you um but i what my my point is i've been in this long enough that I've seen all of the things in the community that you've talked about. I'm, I'm okay. not ignorant to that. Okay. I'm lucky, though, that I've never been in a situation where an instructor has said to me, you need to pay me $200 or you're not getting your blue belt. You okay. need to buy my gi or you can't come back. You can't talk to this person because they train at that school and I don't like their instructor. I've never been in those situations. Sure. And so that's been fortunate for me. And when I look at the way my instructors approach competition where – there are students who are interested in competing in tournaments and they support them and do as best they can to help prepare them and help them feel confident. But they're never standing in front of the cl class and saying, if you don't go compete this weekend, you're not getting promoted. If you yes. don't win this competition, you're not coming back. I think that that's a healthy balance. I think that that's serving the community that there are people who want to challenge themselves and that's the best yeah. way that they can challenge themselves is to I go agree. to a local Naga tournament and enter the mm. master's division and see how well they can do. Okay. And there's the people we've talked about who don't want to do that at all. Okay. I, for me, that feels like a good balance of supporting the people who want to compete and nurturing the people who just want to learn how to do an arm bar. Would you okay. agree that that's a good balance or would you think that they should discourage people from competing at all? I find to discourage people from competing because not of the competition, but because of the environment of the competition. And because what that is led to believe that that is, you even said that's the best way that they can challenge themselves. I strongly disagree with that. Okay. Because we can spar one time. The best way to challenge yourself actually is to have your kid getting kicked and then fight it. That's the best way to challenge yourself, right? But we're, we're attempting to do that in a safe environment. So what we created was a game that is the competition that is fairly safe, but fairly dangerous. So basically, we're pretending that that is real. So then you get nervous to go into a competition, don't you, bro? I used to do that too. Throw up before, go to the restaurant <laughs> before. It's terrible. Yes. Yeah. Because why? Because I think that's real. So that's one of the benefits. You're, you're pretending that that is real. The, getting those emotions, getting that yes. adrenaline and those feelings. Man, that's that's... That, that can be beneficial. Now, my the, where I sit right now, Justin, is that that is not beneficial at all. What is beneficial is for you to sit with yourself and realize what is the calling that you have and then go do that thing in real life. Remove the game side of it. Like, all of it. 
Like, think about <laughs> all the champions that you see on MMA and Jiu-Jitsu. Those guys are super men's, Justin. I really believe, bro, they're super men's with super powers. Even their bodies, like, super men-like. Who knows how they got those? It's a different conversation. But they have it. I have an idea, I think. I, I think ha I have yes, an idea. Yes. We know. We know. We know what they've been putting inside their veins. But my point is, let's use that intensity and let's fight an answer for real problems in our lives. Could be being a cop. Could be helping women that got assaulted. Could be helping kids. Could be whatever. You like, I have this story, brother. I don't know if you heard me saying it before. Which imagine Superman, he, he boom, land on the planet Earth. He has all the attributes of Superman and the values of Superman. And instead of fighting evil, instead of fighting lies, instead of fighting fear and inadequacy, they look at other Supermans and they, they start fighting themselves. That's literally what's happening with my message. I put a post out and say, guys, there's more to Jiu-Jitsu. There's more to being a warrior than what we're doing in the community. That's basically the gist of it. And then they look at me, they start fighting me. No, no, no. I was like, guys. It's not even about jiu-jitsu. It's about a real fight that's happening over there. We need to remember what we stand for. We need to remember our values, to fight for our families, to fight for what is right. Because if we are the warriors of the planet Earth, weaponized with one of the most powerful weapons, which is jiu-jitsu, there must be, to my understanding, something more than clacking weapons with another guy that knows how to fight. And then making a whole business out of this. It must, it must be. And for each individual, I... it's different. Yeah, I I, I I I totally get where you're coming from. I I I agree, but still love competing. If that's fair, I like that I agree fair. with what you're saying. I, I I see all the faults in it, and I I I have been critical of the industry and of the community, but I'm also part of that industry and part of that community. I acknowledge that. Um, fair. I would I would love it if we weren't having the top people in the sport basically promoting steroids and the message that sends to younger competitors. And you go all down that rabbit hole of, I wish this didn't happen. I wish we didn't do this. I wish we didn't do that. And I try to do my best to call those things out as yes. I see them. Yes. But, but what, what draws me back into staying in the community is the, I don't view the community as the millions of people who do jujitsu. I view it as the 40 people at my Academy that I really enjoy being with and, and spending time with and, and training with. Yep, and that's yep. the community to focus on, yep. not trying to fix what's happening at every IBJJF World Championship and who's doing what. Exactly. That's the community to focus on. But my, I, my, I guess my, the question I probably should have asked you in the beginning is, are you still training jiu-jitsu? After all of this, are you still on a mat somewhere training with the people you care about and your friends? The answer is no. Okay. No longer... Teaching Jiu Jitsu feel... as you guys understand Jiu Jitsu to be. Right. Well, my, my, my question was going to be because, as someone who has spent a lot of time, has developed a very high level of skill, has obviously had success as an instructor and knows how to be a good instructor, do you feel some, I don't want to say obligation, that's too strong of a word. Do you feel yeah. some not quite obligation to pass that down to more people who want to learn these skills? Yes and no, because my obligation comes from, man, you guys are teaching. There's a lot of teachers out there. There's a lot of information. They will find it. The people that need to find it will find it. I have an obligation of giving jujitsu to people that have no access to it. That's why I have a social project that I'm attempting to kick that off in Brazil. I really believe that those people really need the, the fighting, the sword itself. But my other responsibility is to tell people that they don't need as much jujitsu as they think. That is my responsibility. And that's why I'm taking the, the hits right here. And that's why I'm, I'm leading this, 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 this movement because um, I really believe, Justin, that I'm overtrained. Okay. Okay. I can see that. I overtrained, bro. To become a little bit better today, I need to invest how many years and go to the guys and get crushed, which doesn't happen. I don't know if you're that good already, but when you get very good, you just you don't tap anymore. It, it becomes a little bit boring. I really believe that I wanted that. I was like, oh, and I want to be very, very, very good and... No but when you get there, like, oh, what am I even doing this for? Like, I don't even, you know what I'm saying? So you invest like five, 10 years on that. And meanwhile, what happened? I don't know much about business. I don't know much about other things in my life. I'm not spending time with my family. You guys, a lot of people listening to this, they work in a nine to five. And then they are trying to, they're going to jiu-jitsu to relax and release. So it only makes sense that when I attack jiu-jitsu in a way, you, you, like, hey, don't take that away from me. Like, I like jiu-jitsu. I like, I like my competition. I like my friends. I'm not trying to take that away from you guys. What I'm saying is, 
Last year, Justin, how many hours did you spend on the mat talking about leg locks, adjustments, arm locks, chokes, X, Y, Z? Give me a number, I'll, random. A lot, let's see. That's three hours. I mean, several hundred to potential thousands of hours <laughs> between actual time on the mat, watching tape, doing this, you know, all of that, all that comes with it. Thank you. My other question for you is that how many hours last year you spent vulnerably sharing your fears and inadequacies with a friend that you can trust to somehow attempt to realize what is best for you, for your family, and for the common good as a society, and not distract yourself with external circumstances or techniques? How many hours did you do that? I will tell you, I do that. I, I do get that a lot because when I go to, and this is this is part of why I'm I'm I don't want to mean to be pushing back on your stance, sure. but part of my, my, where I push back is I had a conversation like this last night with the black belt that I train underneath, where we're talking about our mm. families, what it means to be a father and a man and a husband and how we can be better at those yes. things. So, f- that's it. so from that, you know, and that's what I said a little bit ago about that community. I do get that, but I understand your point that there are people who do not. I understand your point that there are jiu-jitsu One, schools that do not. there's people who do, who do not. Correct. Fair. They're completely lost in the matrix of jiu-jitsu. But um, just – and I love the pushback, by the way. I need you to push back because we need to find the truth. And the pushback will do that. We'll we, we craft the gem. So thank you for that. But my question for you is that in comparison of hours in jiu-jitsu and hours doing that, th- th- right. everything that you mentioned right. is, is, is what we need more. Is what I'm attempting to do with this movement. Is what I'm attempting to do with this community that I'm attempting to create. It's more of this, and then less of this. Right. So, so is it would it be a ten to one? What, what would you say? Yeah, twenty I mean, to one. The way your hands are right now, at about a ten to one. It's probably that's what it is. And I understand you're trying to close that gap down. <laughs> I don't know if your hands are big enough to do ten to one, but yeah, about that. There you go. It is a lot. So, so you got that's the point. Jiu Jitsu is beautiful. The community is beautiful. Watch out. Watch over your friends. At your school, look them in the eyes. They're in pain, bro. Men or women, we're in pain. We don't know. We're afraid. Life is messy. Life is crazy. Look at the media. Look at, like, there's a lot of stuff happening out there. Let's enhance those and realize they need less of the other side. If we can flip that balance, I would be extremely happy. And the competitions can still exist. Let me tell you this, Justin. If competitions existed on the same ratio that your authentic, vulnerable, real conversations about your values exist in your life, in the same, but opposite, I think that would be incredible. A little bit of the same little bit that you did, like you did yesterday night. If there was the amount of competition and everything else would be more of the other, I think that as martial artists, we would be going on the right path. I un- I understand what you're saying. I, I I I totally get it. So where are you personally? Where do you go from from here? What's next? And and how do you push out the message that you're trying to put out? Great point. I realized. That when I was a blue belt, someone told me, oh, Ivan, you're not good enough yet. You cannot do a social project. And then when I was a purple belt, they told me that, you know, almost there. And then a brown belt, not a black belt yet. When a black belt, I told you that before, not a world champion and X, Y, Z. So I really, I would, I would die a happy man, let's call that. If people that engage with my content and with the books and whatever they, they come from my mouth, even on this podcast right now, that they realize that they don't need anybody's permission to take a stand for what they truly believe. They don't need to be bigger, wealthier, because I know big guys that are cowards. I know small guys that are cowards. It's not your size. Oh, no, but I need to make more money. No, you're a coward, and you're blaming and hiding behind that you don't have enough money. Because there's millionaires that they are cowards, and they hide it because they have too much money, they have too much to lose. Some of you guys say, oh, I'm a, I'm a world champion five times, I cannot compete X, Y, Z, because... X, Y, Z. No, that's not a lie. That's a lie. Because the guy that never won those tournaments, they say the same thing because I never won tournaments. Therefore, I cannot speak my truth. So if you engage with anything that I'm saying and you say, man, you know what? I'm going to finish this podcast. I'm going to go stop lying about who I truly am. Like, who are you really? We don't even know, bro. But we know arm locks and leg locks and adjustments and bow chokes. We know all of that. But like, what do you stand for? Like, I talk to my friends. I have close, close friends, Justin, that I'm talking to them on the phone. I say, hey, what are you willing to die for? Oh, you know what? I never thought about that. Black belts, bro. And I'm like, okay, so we found a problem. We need to realize that. We can even live the same lifestyle. We just need to know thyself. And again, it's the promise of martial arts, self-mastery, which breeds purpose. 
which then can you compete? Yes, but do it on purpose. Don't do it because you're being misled. Because once you win the 10 cents medal, you're going to feel good about yourself. You're not. You're going to post a picture on Facebook. You're going to promote their business. They're going to make millions of dollars and you're going to still work on a nine to five. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I, I understand, appreciate the message. Yes. But I'm still in that camp of, Vajra, don't take my jiu-jitsu away. But I... <laughs> I, know, I know. But I'm sorry. No, but no, Part of me is sorry. But no, you know but don't be sorry. You know, this is... this. Is, I appreciate you coming on and, and, and talking about these things that are important to you. And that's the whole thing, you know, we've, we've been talking about now for this time we've been on together is what's yep. important to you and, and what's and what's pushing forward for you and, and what yep. means a lot to you. So I wouldn't say be sorry, yep. but I... As someone who... I identify with the problems you have identified. I don't like them. I still love my jujitsu. I still want to compete, but I still want to be on the right side of things. I don't want to be someone who's corrupted by the industry. And I totally get the message that, that you're putting out there. And I think it's important that we have conversations like this, where sometimes jujitsu as an industry and as a community can sort of check itself and not just get fall into the well. That's just how it is now with steroids. Well, that's just now how it is with these predators in in our industry. I think these are important conversations to have, even if maybe we don't completely agree on some of it. I think it's important that we are at least having the discussion. And Fair. selfishly, I do hope you start training jujitsu again. I hope that that's the end result. I hope that you see the change you're looking for to where you feel like you can be back in the sport. Would that be something that you could see happening? If you saw changes in the sport that you wanted to see, you'd find yourself back on a mat and teaching white belts and blue belts, the intricacies of bow and arrow chokes, or are you, are you too far gone? I'm too far gone. Okay. Can we, can we come back in two years and see if that's still true? We can. Cause I'm, I, maybe I'm just being optimistic and hopeful and yeah. I, I hope that things can change and some things that, you're bringing out and, and, and pointing out can maybe, you know, you talked about you course corrected five degrees and it led you a big difference away. If we, as an industry can course correct like five degrees and lead us, I hope it, oh, wow, man. I hope it gets to the point where that happens. Justin, that's, that's when you said that I actually gave me a little bit of a glimpse of hope. <laughs> like, oh, you know what? It might be impossible. <laughs> it could happen, my friend. It could happen. It could happen. It's cool because you're saying like, and I that's the, the the biggest pushback even I get from close friends of mine. They're like, Ivan, don't take my jiu-jitsu away. Don't take my jiu-jitsu away. And man, I like that's why I'm saying I'm sorry because I'm really not trying to do that. What I am trying to do, Justin, and I will, I will do the same thing they did with me. I invite you to do something. Maybe in two years that will happen. But what I'm inviting you to see, brother, is that I'm, I am trying to give jiu-jitsu to you. I was trying to take your eyes out of the sword, which is the jiu-jitsu, and think about this, this epic scene. You have this jiu-jitsu sword, you drop it, and you keep dri- driving forward. Or maybe your sword broke. Maybe that's my case. Yeah. My sword broke. I dropped it, and I keep charging as a warrior willing with fire in my heart because it's a, it's a small world, this jiu-jitsu community, and there's a lot of things we can do. I really believe that if men like this get together, willing to speak the truth, willing to do like you did with your coach yesterday, and just like, man, how can I align my life to live the life that I, I once thought I was going to live? Bro, because that was my, my whole life, Justin. Like, course correcting. Oh, okay. I need to compete now. Okay. 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 So I keep trusting these people up to the day that I found myself like, okay, I did everything you guys told me. And now you're telling me that it's not profitable enough. So why didn't you just tell me that in the beginning? At least you would give me a chance to pursue jiu-jitsu with more passion. Still training. I'm not telling you to quit. I'm not telling you to stop competing. But also, I would be better at other things in my life, which I'm not. I'm very good at choking people for fun. Like, I don't even... Ah, I'm a little ashamed of that, bro. I have to tell you. Jiu-jitsu, that jiu-jitsu I, that, is that weird. It took me that, so long. That's the one thing I always say. Jiu-jitsu is weird because not only do we try to choke our friends, once the round is over, we try to help our friends better to choke us next time. And that's a it's a strange thing yep. for people who don't train or understand the sport to, to comprehend. But yep. jiu-jitsu is very weird. But, Ivanja, I, I appreciate what you're doing. And I appreciate the conversation. Thank you for taking an Thank hour you. to come on and, and talk with me on a Wednesday morning. I appreciate it. And if people aren't following you or, or, or they don't know where to find more about the message, just let people know where they can find your stuff. Fair. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the conversation, brother. I really believe that that is what will lead us 
to find the truth, whatever that is. Um, if you resonate anything with this message, there's two things I want you to know. One, you can find me on Instagram or Facebook, Evander Grateful, or you can go straight to the website, which is blindedbytheblackbelt.com. Very easy, because that's what I thought I was. I was blinded by the black belt. And more important than that, I really mean that, more important than finding me anywhere else is for us to look ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves, what is that I'm willing to take a stand, no matter if I win or if I lose? Stop pursuing success and proficiency blindly. Realize that there's something more important than victory itself. And once you find that thing, my man, all this power and the be this benefits of martial arts, which I truly believe to be, will be available to you. It will be much quicker to you. And with that, you know, I really believe that we'll be doing our, our, our role as martial artists. And then you can still keep training jiu-jitsu, still going to a little tournament here and there if you, have, if you can protect your heart from what we see nowadays. So thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Evandro, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. A big thank you to Evandro for coming on. It was definitely an interesting conversation. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel and I will see you all in the next video.